Today, we'll look at the latest firmware revision released from Wahoo for the original Kicker units. So firmware version 1.5.68 was released this time last week. Now it's troublesome talking about particular versions because next week it'll change, but there's a few features included in this revision that will be from here on in and it's definitely worth the upgrade. So this is specifically for the original Kicker units released in 2013, not for the Kicker 2 or Kicker Snap, uh, Kicker 2 over here. So it's these two units we're looking at today. I've updated this one last night and got some numbers. We'll run through updating the firmware on this and we'll go through the spin down process as well and what it all means. So the number one reason why you want this update on your Kicker is because it converts these original units to almost the Kicker 2. Let me explain. The way in which the original Kicker measured power was this disc here. You can see there's a slight movement. That's actually the strain gauge, exactly the same as the strain gauges in other power meters on your bike. And as that turned, this disc here got pushed forward a little bit and it was that measurement that reported your power. Looking over here on the kicker two, that disc doesn't move. It calculates power based on the braking performance and resistance and power and speed and temperature, a lot of other calculations into the flywheel here. So no strain gauge. Back to the original kicker, that strain gauge there becomes obsolete. Let me show you how. So the original kicker can measure power in two ways now. Strain gauge mode, the original mode, or model mode, which is exactly how the kicker two works. Model mode is said to be as accurate as a calibrated strain gauge, more reliable, and has faster responsiveness. Now, faster responsiveness is another key feature as well that you want. In Zwift, that means going up hills, it'll kick in sooner, over the top and cresting hills, and also in erg mode, you'll have quicker response time. So that's a big win right there. So I've updated this one. Let's run through the process of updating the firmware on this unit here. So using the Wahoo Fitness app, this is my iPhone, similar procedure for Android. Selecting my yellow kicker, you can see there it checks for firmware automatically because it has an older firmware and 1568 comes up. Hitting update now. I've sped this up a lot, it takes a few minutes. Okay, firmware update done. We have to turn the Bluetooth off and back on on our phones. We also power cycle the kicker. Reconnect. And we scroll down to the bottom there. 1568, latest firmware. We now have the option for advanced spin down on the spin down menu. So clicking on that. And again, I've sped this process up. So prior to the three minutes it makes you do, I did 10 minutes as well, just to be sure, just to make sure the system was warm and that spin down would be as accurate as possible. So after the three minutes, those familiar with the standard spin down procedure will know what this is all about. You spin up to 36 kilometers an hour. If you're in miles, it may show something different, but here we are in kilometers. We slowly bring the speed up to 36 kilometers an hour. And as soon as it says stop, you stop pedaling. Wait for the system to drop the speed. It'll then ask you to do it again. So that's something different about the advanced spin down. There's two spin downs. Again, slowly bringing it up and dropping your cadence to zero. This one's a bit quicker. And we're done. Gives you a brake strength value, 1.18. And now in sensor info as well, you'll see the brake strength load. There we go, 1.18. So once that's done, it automatically switches the unit to model mode from strain gauge mode. There is a way to switch it back. We won't cover that today. So there we have it, the firmware update process completed on here and the advanced spin down, which that first 10 minutes I think is pretty important to make sure everything is warmed up and as accurate as possible and just bringing that power up to that 36k an hour, stopping your pedaling, waiting for it to come down. Just follow those instructions on the screen and you'll be spot on. So some data from last night putting the white kicker one up against my PowerTap P1 pedals. It's all looking pretty good there. Erg mode versus pedals. As a human, we're never perfect. That's why there's a bit of jumping around there. But the most important one here is your mean max power over certain durations. So these numbers here are brilliantly aligned. One minute we're looking, look, that's 380, 380. That's absolutely beautiful down here. 316, 317. Five minutes, we've got a separation of about, what, 
two and a half, three watts. Same for 10 minutes, same for 20 minutes and 30 minutes. So this is probably the closest I've seen two different power meters match. So quite impressive there. That's the Kicker 1 in ERG mode with the new firmware up against the PowerTap P1 pedals. Model mode was first included with the firmware revision back in February. So this is the second revision of that, and I think it's pretty stable. As we've seen here on this unit, those numbers were pretty good. So in wrap up, if you're an original Kicker owner, pull the phones out, update straight away, and spend that 10 minutes or so doing the advanced spin down to get more accuracy, more reliability, and better responsiveness out of your unit. Post the update. If you find your power numbers are a lot higher or a lot lower than they were in the past, you may have fixed an underlying problem that's always been there, or you may have introduced a new problem. How to know? That's a tricky one. You'll have to get a bike with a known good power meter and uh, run some tests. The tests I run with the power tap pedals against this in model mode, that was spot on, so super happy. All right, we'll leave it there. Pull your phones out and start updating. See you soon.